the first lecture, we uh, started speaking about maximum principle on, uh, for um, evolving um, um, manifolds by some geometric flow. Um, now I will say um, another type uh, of maximum principle. I have talked in the first lecture about uh, maximum principle for functions defined on the manifold. And, uh, but there is also something um, important that has to be said about the manifold itself. Um, that is, we have um, the following result. We have not only comparison for uh, different functions on our hypersurface, but also for different hypersurfaces. That is, we have the following result. Um, which is uh, called um, avoidance uh, uh, principle. Uh, so let uh, um, M zero N0 um, in Rn plus 1 uh, hypersurfaces, um, smooth um, for the sake of simplicity, closed, um, smooth closed. Uh, so if uh, they are disjoint uh, at initial time, then they stay disjoint. I denote by MT the evolution uh, of the mean curvature flow, by mean curvature flow of M0 and the same for N. So MT and T are the corresponding evolutions at time T. Um, for all t greater than zero, uh, let me specify uh, such that uh, mt and t exist. Uh, I will uh, speak about smooth um, evolutions, so for t up to the first singular time of the two manifolds, but this principle holds in uh, great generality. So any reasonable definition of weak solution also, and any, any good solution also satisfied the same, um, the same principle. Um, so we, we have already seen by maximum principle argument a special case of this result uh, when one of the two is a sphere. So we have seen that um, if uh, M0 is uh, an arbitrary surface and then 0 is a sphere inside, for instance, then uh, the, the two evolution uh, remain distinct. Uh, or also if uh, M0 is a sphere outside. But well, the, the result says that the same holds for any pair of a hypersurface. So if, uh, if you have one hypersurface uh, inside the other, then uh, the evolution uh, preserves this inclusion. But also holds if uh, they are just, uh, the enclosed region are disjoint. Also in this case, uh, the evolution uh, will uh, stay uh, distinct. Um, and this is a very useful principle because in many cases you can uh, say something about the behavior of a given hypersurface by using barriers with something uh, which, is, uh, which has a known uh, evolution. Um, so how can one prove this result? I will not give all the details, but there are basically two ways of uh, proving this. Um, so one way is uh, um, one says, uh, suppose that the result is not true, then there is a, sorry? Um, 
No, I mean, if, um, sorry, if they are disjoint at initial time, then they stay disjoint at all following times. So if, if at later time they, they are not disjoint, uh, yeah, you, you can argue the other way around. So if, if they are not disjoint at a later time, then they are not disjoint at all previous times. Um, well, well, what, uh, instead, well, it's not true that if they are not disjoint at initial time, uh, they can become disjoint afterwards. This is possible. But, uh, uh, so if they start uh, with an intersection, this intersection may ev either persist or be lost, but, uh, but uh, it uh, propagates in the past. Uh, the, so the disjointness uh, propagates uh, forward and uh, uh, having an intersection propagates in the past. And um, so one way is to say, uh, suppose that uh, we have a first time where they touch, then uh, uh, we have a picture like this. Uh, we, uh, so you have uh, MT and uh, NT, uh, then they, they continue in some way. Uh, they may touch at one point or at more points, uh, but um, at any point where they touch, uh, since it's the first time that they touch, they have to touch tangentially, then they have a common normal, then uh, um, one can, uh, they have a common tangent plane, so one can locally write both uh, uh, hypersurfaces as graphs uh, over a given uh, plane, hyperplane, and um, then uh, write locally the evolution by mean curvature as a graph, as you saw in the previous lectures. It is a, a parabolic equation, and uh, you can argue that you have a bounded domain uh, where um, two solutions of the same parabolic equation have uh, a uh, so touch for the first time uh, in uh, a point in, an inter in the interior of the domain, which is impossible by the strong maximum principle, and therefore this cannot happen. But um, there is another way to prove this result, which is uh, uh, probably more interesting, uh, which is the following. One can say that actually... Um, not only the state is joined, but we can be more precise and say that the distance increases. The distance between the two uh, hypersurfaces is increasing. And um, how can we see this? Again, I just uh, give uh, the um, intuitive part of the argument. Uh, that is... Um, let us uh, draw our two hypersurfaces uh, and T at a certain time. And uh, let us consider uh, a pair of points uh, where the distance uh, is attained. So take uh, one point, uh, so there is at least one pair of points such that the um, you have P and Q, so P on uh, MT and uh, Q on uh, NT, such that uh, um, the distance uh, between the two hypersurfaces uh, is equal to the distance of these uh, two points. Let me call uh, uh, G the... Uh, the immersion which gives the hypersurface N. But then I claim that the distance between these two points uh, has a non-negative derivative. So the, these two points are not becoming closer. Um, it is, um, so there are standard arguments that show that uh, um, if, so if you consider the evolution of a, of a minimum of uh, many functions like this. If um, 
at the point where the minimum is attained, if at any point where the minimum is attained, the derivative has a certain sign, then also the infimum has a, a derivative, possibly weak derivative with the same sign, so it has the same monotonicity. And uh, so um, what can we say? Uh, how can we study the, the, the derivative of, uh, of this distance? Well, um, since uh, these two points minimize the distance, uh, it is uh, easy to see that the segment joining them must coincide, uh, must be parallel to the normals at both points. So the, the normal uh, at uh, these two points must coincide. Uh, this means that uh, the normal at P must be equal to minus the normal at Q. Uh, I mean, plus or minus, depending on the orientation, but uh, the, 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 the product of the mean curvature and the normal is independent of the orientation. Uh, so it's... Um, the, this vector divided by its norm. Um, so then, uh, what's the derivative of this? Uh, well, we can, uh, it is uh, uh, simpler to consider the derivative of the square. So the derivative uh, of um, times f p t minus g q t um, then we have uh, the mean curvature um, at p t so minus h p t times uh, uh, nu uh, pt uh, plus uh, h qt qt but uh, so this vector this vector and this vector are all uh, parallel and uh, so let's choose the orientation as in the picture uh, this means that this is equal to um, uh, well we have um, let's say this is um, with this orientation uh, this is a multiple of um, fp minus fq is um, minus uh, is a positive multiple of uh, minus n uh, and p. So let's. Um, so the, the norm is the, the, the distance itself. Then uh, we have uh, uh, this is uh, minus uh, n uh, uh, n p. And also this is minus uh, NP, so this is um, uh, minus uh, HPT. Um, well, um, maybe it's uh, more clear if I change the orientation here. Let me, let me call this the, the normal of Q so that, that they coincide because the, the argument becomes clearer. So we have uh, minus uh, the curvature in Q. So we have this two minus sign that become one, new, mal, uh, new times new is one, so this is uh, two times uh, the, the distance times um, uh, the difference of the mean curvatures. Uh, 
which is intuitively clear because every point is uh, moving in normal direction by the, um, by the mean curvature. So the, the, the distance evolves like the, the mean curvature here times the mean curvature here, uh, minus the mean curvature here. And um, now, in, what is um, easy to see from the fact that these two points minimize distance is that uh, they, they have either to turn in opposite direction, that is, in this case, um, this would be positive, this would be negative, then this would clearly be positive, or if also, otherwise they, they could also turn a bend in the same way, but uh, we could also have uh, n of t doing like this. But um, the curvature here has to be smaller than the curvature here. Because if the curvature is larger, then this means that we could find uh, a nearby point which is closer to m than this is. So this is uh, greater than 0 by minimization property of these two points, Gr greater than or equal to zero. So th this is greater than or equal to zero. And so we, um, we see that the, 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 at this point that the distance increases, so the same holds uh, for uh, the global distance of the two hypersurface. So we have this um, avoidance principle, which is uh, actually uh, j not just for mean curvature flow, um, it just requires that the speed is monotone in the curvatures, which is the usual parabolicity condition for this flow. So also for the kind of flow um, Toti Daskalopoulos is uh, speaking in, uh, in her uh, talks. And um, by similar argument, uh, one can also prove that if... Uh, M0 is embedded, then it remains embedded. So, roughly speaking, uh, embedded means uh, without self intersections. So, if you start without self intersection, mean curvature flow cannot develop new self inter intersections. Intuitively speaking, different parts, uh, so the singularities can only be local, the um, nearby points can uh, uh, develop uh, a corner a cusp, uh, but uh, you cannot have uh, faraway points that come together because we would have a, a behavior similar to two different hypersurfaces coming together, which is excluded. Um, let me make a comment about this. Uh, uh, since uh, uh, you have seen um, interesting examples of um, um, in the Tonegawa's lectures of uh, uh, flows with uh, intersections that have a, a peculiar behavior. Um, there are two possible ways of considering uh, uh, objects with intersections, depending if you interpret the mean curvature flow as an evolution of um, immersions or of an evolution of sets. If you have, uh, let's say for simplicity, a curve uh, with a self-intersection, if you have the first point of view that you consider the evolution of the parameterization, then this is not a singularity. Uh, the, this point uh, is just, uh, I mean, the, the, the two times that you pass through this point are independent from each other. They don't see each other, so you, you don't realize that uh, by looking at the evolution that here you don't have a local homeomorphism on the image. Uh, so one, uh, one, one point will smoothly evolve in this way, the other point uh, will smoothly evolve in this way. You just count it that this uh, intersection has two, two distinct uh, points of, the, uh, of our evolving object which at that time occupy the same position but then evolve independently. Uh, then, in this context, this results just says that if you don't have something like this at the beginning, then you don't have it also at later times. Um, but 
you can also have the point of view that you don't regard uh, this uh, as a parameterization, but of a subset of n, or the boundary of a, of a subset of n, then uh, in this case, uh, this counts as a singularity, and then it is non-trivial to uh, describe what is going on. Then you have this uh, phenomenon that you have heard of in the other lectures. So uh, don't be uh, confused by this. Uh, uh, it's uh, two different ways of uh, looking at the same object. Uh, okay, um, this um, was the avoidance principle. The next thing I want to uh, tell you about is um, something I've already mentioned, that is um, uh, the um, a version of the maximum principle for tensors, so not just for uh, uh, real valued uh, functions on our manifold, but uh, um, typically it applies to uh, functions uh, which take place in some uh, bundle of uh, uh, bilinear forms or uh, linear operators on the tangent bundles. So typically, uh, we will see the first application will be to show that uh, uh, convexity is preserved by the mean curvature flow. Con Convexity is equivalent to the uh, positive or non-negativity of uh, the second fundamental form. So second fundamental form is a bilinear form on the tangent space. So we have to use a principle which uh, uh, ensures the preservation of positivity on um, uh, time-dependent uh, bilinear forms uh, on our manifold uh, evolving by suitable PT. And, um, well, there was uh, some um, independent result uh, in uh, the PDE community, especially in the um, uh, context of reaction diffusion equations. So there is, uh, um, there are, um, results about invariant regions for reaction diffusion equations for parabolic systems of PD, which are somehow related. But in this form suitable for geometric evolutions, the, the, um, the maximum principle is due to Hamilton. Um, and uh, the for the, the way I'm going to write it now is contained in the first uh, paper by Hamilton on the Ricci flow. And then there is a second uh, form of maximum principle uh, contained in a later paper. Today I'll just uh, talk about the, this first one, which uh, just uh, concerns the invariance of positivity. So suppose that M is um, a manifold. Uh, with the uh, Riemannian metric G of T, which depends on time. So Riemannian manifold uh, with the time dependent metric. And suppose that uh, on uh, this manifold, so T goes uh, in some interval zero capital T, and uh, you have um, a a bilinear form defined on the tangent space of M for each point in time. You have some uh, Mij is um, of P, T is a bilinear form on uh, uh, any point on uh, space and time. Um, the manifold, which uh, satisfies an evolution equation. Uh, the time derivative is equal to the Laplacian. Uh, Laplacian, uh, of course, uh, corresponding to this uh, uh, time-dependent metric, uh, plus some uh, first-order term, uh, let's say some uh, a, a k uh, pt uh, k derivative of uh, mij 
Um, and, the, and then we have some uh, reaction term. We have uh, some uh, Bij, where um, where um, uh, so Ak is uh, uh, given a vector field. And uh, Bij is a function of uh, the metric and of, um, of m. Maybe m is not the uh, best choice of a letter because uh, it, uh, it's very similar to the m of the manifold. Let me write it more calligraphic. Um, so let me. Maybe let me write it component-wise so it's clear that. So this is a um, function of uh, smooth function of the, um, our bilinear form and uh, of the metric. Typically, is a polynomial. is obtained by uh, taking uh, uh, products of the bilinear form with itself uh, and the traces with the metric. We will see some example afterwards. Um, then we want to give a condition which ensures that the positive definiteness of Mij is invariant in time. And uh, what's the condition for the scalar case? Uh, if M would be a function, then the positivity would be invariant if the reaction term is um, uh, non-negative when its argument is zero. So we would need something saying that if m is uh, 0, which in this case means uh, uh, no longer strictly positive definite, but just a semi-definite, then uh, the, um, this uh, is positive. Well, now we have a bilinear form, so we have uh, many possible directions. Then the, uh, the right condition is this one. Uh, it's what Hamilton called uh, the null eigenvector condition. So if um, uh, vi is a um, null eigenvector for m, is equal to zero, then uh, uh, the reaction term must be positive or zero evaluated uh, um, when the, 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 the quadratic form associated to Bij has to be non-negative on this vector. Um, the, the notation here is a bit, um, um, well, there is a, some small abuse of notation. So uh, in this case, uh, I mean um, an arbitrary matrix, uh, so the, not uh, our specific uh, uh, evolution. So if, the, if, the, if we take a matrix, uh, so th this is a function of matrices. So if we take a matrix and the zero eigenvalue of this matrix, then uh, if we evaluate Bij in this matrix, uh, we obtain something that gives uh, a non-negative result uh, when you evaluate the quadratic form on this eigenvalue. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, you may restrict yourself to the, uh, the, the possible image of M. If you know that M is taking values in some uh, subset, you can uh, impose the condition only on the subset. Um, well, then the, the, the conclusion is, uh, so under the above assumption, 
um, if uh, Mij is uh, non-negative definite at time zero, then, uh, well, let me write it, um, let me write it positive, then it are also versions with uh, non-negative. Then, uh, um, uh, at t equal to zero, then uh, Mij is strictly positive for all uh, positive times. Uh, under the, all the above assumptions. Um, well, so the, um, I think the, the symmetry is somehow um, uh, included in the statement because uh, we are, um, but, um, No, probably not, I guess. Uh, I mean, you... Um, well, I mean, in, um, in order to speak about... Um, you, yeah, MIJ, since we're talking about positivity, then uh, somehow we are um, considered something symmetric. And... Um, uh, maybe the... So the BIJ... But I mean, if the BIJ is the, um, in the equation, uh, so all other terms are sim hmm. yeah, all, all other terms are symmetric. So I uh, think BIJ should also be symmetric for uh, for construction. So I think it's not uh, uh, it's, uh, it only makes sense for for sim symmetric. Of course, one could um, make other versions. One could. Uh, uh, stated for uh, uh, Mij operator from uh, the tangent space to itself, and then one could uh, speak about the positivity of the associated bilinear form. Uh, however, let's um, let's prove it in this way, and um, The, um, for simplicity, I will make the proof under a stronger assumption. Um, that we have a strict inequality here. on the null eigenvalue. Uh, but this is um, it, it's standard uh, in uh, the proofs of the maximum principle to pass from uh, this case to the case of uh, the equality by doing a suitable perturbation of the, the Mij. So I, it's uh, really just um, um, a technical point which is uh, very standard. Um, so how do we argue? Again, we argue by contradiction. So suppose uh, uh, the assertion is false. So this is not positive definite for all times. Then it means that there is a first time where it is not positive definite. By continuity, it has to be positive semi-definite. Uh, so... Um, uh, this means that um, there exists some uh, point p star and time t star such that uh, um, Mij uh, is, uh, has a null eigenvector uh, v, uh, v, vi at uh, P star T star, uh, but uh, is um, um, strictly positive for uh, uh, T less than T star, and by continuity, uh, semi-definite uh, at T equal T star. Uh, then the idea is to uh, reduce the situation to a scalar one. We want to focus on this uh, direction vi, 
the null eigenvector, uh, we, know it, we know that there exists at this point. But it is convenient to continue this uh, vector uh, all over the, the manifold in some way. So define uh, VI as a vector field on uh, M. So for all points and all times, uh, we only need a T star. Um, we can do it in such a way that um, at uh, the point we are interested in, P star, T star, uh, the derivatives, uh, the covariant derivatives of the I are zero, and also the time derivative. So we cannot uh, have it, uh, uh, so it's not trivial that we can have it uh, uh, everywhere, but uh, it's uh, easy to see that we can have it at a given point. We, we can continue it uh, such that at the, the, the point where we are looking, uh, the, the derivatives are zero. And then we uh, reduce our situation to a scalar one by, by using uh, this function. Uh, which is just uh, define uh, uh, f of pt equal to the mij of pt evaluated uh, in this vector vivj. Vivj also depend on pt. Um, and uh, we want to see what is uh, the uh, equation satisfied by f. So when we do the derivatives, uh, so in general, we have to differentiate all three terms. But uh, um, if we. If we only look what's happening in this point, uh, we only get this first, the, ter the, the term where the, this one is derived because these other derivatives are zero at this point. The, the same happens for the first uh, derivatives. So our uh, then we have the Laplace. The Laplace is a bit, uh, uh, bit more tricky because um, we, we have basically to do two derivatives, uh, which can fall on these three factors in all uh, possible combinations. Then we surely have the, the term where both derivatives are falling here. Um, then we have to take care when we have the gradient of IVJ, we, we don't know if it is zero at the, the nearby points. So um, all uh, terms with uh, one derivative uh, on uh, either of the two is zero at our point. But there is one, one term which is, uh, so actually two, but they are equal by symmetry, which uh, need uh, 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 different um, argument. Uh, the terms where two derivatives uh, both fall on uh, some one of the two. So Laplace vi times vj. But this is zero because uh, we have mij vj. So this is uh, vj is an allergen vector. So this uh, this is uh, zero. So basically, when we compute the derivative at p star, t star, um, the derivatives only uh, fall here. And so by the equation satisfied by mij, we conclude that uh, uh, dF dt is equal to Laplace f 
plus um, uh, D, um, AK DKF uh, plus uh, we have um, um, what we call BIJ VI VJ. Okay, then we know that this um, is um, strictly positive by the null eigenvector condition. So in general, could be greater than or equal to zero, but I, for simplicity, I'm uh, assuming that it's strictly positive. And uh, the other terms, you have the usual uh, arguments of the maximum principle. You have that the function f uh, um, is a zero at this point, but is um, greater than or equal to zero for uh, t less than t star and uh, any p. Uh, so this means that uh, this point, um, the gradient is zero. So it is, um, in space, it is a local minimum. So this is zero. This is um, greater than or equal to zero. And uh, the time derivative instead is less than or equal to zero because uh, it is uh, positive at previous times and zero there. So this is less than or equal to zero. And then you have a contradiction. Something non-positive uh, is equal to the sum of something non-negative plus something strictly positive. This is a contradiction. And uh, OK, so this concludes the simplified proof of this principle, assuming the strict inequality. And uh, so then let's uh, see an application. Um, so I hope in the remaining time to uh, give um, a sketch of the proof uh, of um, uh, the classical theorem on the behavior of uh, convex hypersurfaces, uh, the um, theorem that Huysken proved in, uh, uh, in the 80s uh, that convex hypersurfaces converge uh, to a round point, so the way it is something said, they shrink to a point, but up to rescaling converge to a sphere. The um, original proof um, is, um, um, is um, quite more complicated than the, the one I'm going to sketch here. But um, the, the one I will sketch here will uh, use uh, what you have heard yesterday with the monotonicity formula and the uh, possible limits of rescaling. And uh, some other argument that have been found uh, uh, also at later times. Uh, but the, um, the, the first uh, properties uh, that were already the, the starting point in Wiskens' original paper are some invariance properties. That is, suppose um, mm, so H i j, let's say strictly positive uh, for simplicity on, uh, on M0. Uh, let me just mention, if you, in this uh, Hamilton's maximum principle, if you start with something uh, non-strictly positive, uh, then um, um, the um, something, uh, so just positive semi-definite, then the conclusion is that it stays uh, at least semi-definite. Uh, and there are also some... Um, a suitable version of a strong maximum principle, some rigidity of the possibilities where you have a, a persistence of the semi-definiteness that can be ruled out in some cases. So it can be shown that uh, all I'm going to say will, would still hold uh, uh, if we have a non-strict convexity on the initial manifold, provided it is compact. This is equivalent to say that M0 is convex. So convex uh, meaning it is the, the boundary of a convex uh, region in, uh, in Rn. Uh, then what can we say? The evolution of um, Hij is given uh, by, um, so let me, I don't remember the, the 
Uh, okay, yeah. Is this one? You have seen it in the first uh, lecture. So we have uh, something like uh, that, that fits in the picture of uh, Hamilton's uh, maximum principle we have seen. Uh, you have time derivative, Laplace, uh, you have uh, no first order term, and this would be the, uh, the, the, the Bij. You see it's a function of uh, the second fundamental form and the metric. And both uh, h and a square come from the second fundamental form and the metric by suitable products and contraction. So the question is, does it satisfy the null eigenvector condition? Well, suppose, um, so if um, um, h i j v j is equal to zero, uh, then uh, when you compute this, uh, it is clearly also equal to zero. I mean, um, second term becomes a squared times zero. And this first term also, um, well, you have an m instead of an i, but the result is again zero. It is, uh, it is immediate. You, so this bij contains uh, as a factor hij. So um, if it is zero on hij, it is also zero on bij. So it satisfies the null eigenvector with equality. Um, this means Hij is uh, uh, preserved by the flow. That is, if uh, the initial hypersurface is convex, then uh, the, all the later evolution uh, uh, gives a convex hypersurface. Um, in, uh, as I mentioned, in contrast to uh, what's called the mean convexity, that is the positivity of the mean curvature, mean convexity is uh, invariant under mean curvature flow also in a general Riemannian manifold. Uh, this results instead uh, um, exploits the Euclidean ambient space because you have uh, some extra terms in a Riemannian manifold which would not satisfy, in general, the null eigenvector condition. Um, there is a, a related property uh, which um, is very useful in the analysis of the mean curvature flow of convex hypersurfaces. That is the so-called the preservation of pinching. Uh, pinching, uh, curvature pinching uh, is an expression that appears in uh, many contexts in um, uh, Riemannian geometry, uh, meaning that um, the, eigen the eigenvalues of some curvature operator, depending on the context, uh, are all positive uh, and uh, are sufficiently close to each other in the sense that uh, a ratio of the, between the, the largest and the smallest uh, cannot be arbitrarily large, but it's bounded by some constant. Um, of course, on a compact, um, well, th this means uh, um, ratio lambda n over lambda 1. If I call lambda n the, the largest principal curvature, and lambda 1 the, the smallest one. Of course, if all curvatures are positive, then uh, this object is bounded uh, on uh, the initial uh, uh, hypersurface. But the question is, uh, as time evolves, and especially when we reach a singularity, will this remain bounded? And the question is yes. So what we uh, see is the, um, the preservation of uh, lambda 1 uh, greater than epsilon h is preserved, is invariant. This is very similar to, to this. Uh, 
lambda 1. If we have this, this is equal to the sum of the eigenvalues. Again, we can, we can say that this is greater than or equal to uh, So it implies that uh, lambda 1, uh, so lambda n over lambda 1 is less than or equal to, um, I think, uh, something like 1 minus less than or equal to epsilon. So this gives a uniform bound on the ratio of the largest and the smallest mean curvature. So in this sense, a condition like this is called a pinching condition. So how can we show that it is invariant? We can define a um, symmetric linear form which uh, is uh, positive if and only if this is satisfied. So define uh, yeah, 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 we are assuming uh, that all curvatures are positive. No, no, uh, yeah, the different, uh, yeah, different uh, meanings, yeah. In the sense of the neck is more um, pinching, the sense is uh, shrinking. And uh, in this case, pinching in the sense of uh, stay together. I, I pinch the, the curvatures in the sense that they, they, they cannot uh, become arbitrarily far away from each other. Yeah, different, uh, different meanings of pinching, yeah. And, uh, okay. Then one can just define this, um, this tensor, Hij minus, uh, so this is um, non negative if and only if, uh, um, if and only if uh, lambda i is greater than epsilon h for all i which is uh, just this, um, yeah, so the, the, it's equivalent to, to saying that the, the smallest is greater than or equal to. And uh, you can check, um, maybe uh, I will not do the computation, but it's uh, easy to check that uh, by a similar argument, uh, um, you can use a Hamilton's maximum principle. You, since, um, Using the evolution equations for this, for this, and for this, using the fact that Gij has uh, zero spatial derivatives, it has only non-zero time derivative, you find easily the equation satisfied by this. You see that it's equal to time derivative minus uh, Laplacian, then some uh, reaction term, which again is easily seen that uh, um, at an allegan vector, so if uh, you have uh, lambda 1 equal to epsilon h uh, at some point. So you have uh, an eigenvector satisfying uh, um, where the, the second fundamental form is, uh, uh, gives um, epsilon h uh, the same eigenvector. Um, you see that the, again, that the reaction term uh, vanishes at the null eigenvectors of this, uh, of this um, uh, tensor. So Hamilton maximum principle implies Mij greater than zero is invariant. 
Okay. Um, this is a typical feature also of um, other geometric flows of the Ricci flow that some positivity conditions of the curvature are uh, invariant under the flow, which is a very useful property for studying the behavior. And um, then um, I will uh, state uh, um, a property of convex set which was uh, found by Ben Andrews. Uh, um, so let me first define if, um, if you have a omega in Rm plus one uh, convex, uh, Um, and uh, M uh, is the convex uh, compact, uh, and M is the, the boundary of the of the set. Uh, so, like our evolving hypersurface, then I call um, rho plus of omega uh, outer radius. Uh, uh, which is um, the radius of uh, the smallest ball uh, containing uh, uh, omega. And then I consider analogously that the inner radius as the radius uh, of the largest ball inside uh, omega. Um, so they, they could be the, um, we can regard them as, um, we can extend these definitions to M. We call uh, the rho plus and rho minus also the outer, outer and inner radius uh, uh, of, uh, of M. For a better chalk. Okay, maybe this is good. Then there is this um, result. Uh, that relates uh, the, the pinching of the curvatures to the pinching of the radii. There is this theorem by uh, Ben Andrews. Uh, I think it's uh, 94 saying that um, so for any let's say uh, c1 in uh, 0 1 there exists some uh, c2 greater than 0 such that uh, um, if uh, omega if m equal the boundary of the omega is a convex uh, hypersurface is uh, such that uh, Lambda n, uh, la lambda, lambda one over lambda n is greater than uh, uh, c one uh, at any point. At every p in uh, in m, uh, then uh, we also have uh, a bound on the ratio of these. Um, so I can also say C2 in 0, 1. Uh, then uh, rho minus uh, of M over rho plus uh, of M is greater than C2. Um, okay, so somehow the... This means that if we can control this, uh, as we know that we can, as I have just shown you, then uh, we can also control um, the ratio of uh, R minus, rho minus and rho plus. So intuitively speaking, both quantities uh, measure how much we deviate from a sphere. On a sphere, we have uh, this uh, identically equal to 1. Uh, so if uh, C1, uh, the, the closer C1 is to 1, the closer we are to something spherical. Um, and uh, also if rho minus is equal to rho plus, then of course you are on a sphere. So just, of course this is just an intuitive uh, justification. Um, 
so the, the corollary is um, if mt is a convex uh, evolving by mean curvature flow implies that rho plus uh, of um, um, so rho, rho minus of mt plus, plus uh, over rho plus of, M, of mt uh, is greater than some C2 independent of time. So it uh, shrinks, but it cannot become more and more eccentric while it shrinks. So the ratio becomes bounded. And then, uh, um, by comparison with spheres, uh, So, um, okay, so let's, um, so let, let us for the moment um, um, use, uh, so remember this, uh, this fact. Um, so the, now, now we have, uh, yes? Um, so rho minus is uh, the, um, you consider that the ball which stay inside the, the hypersurface, so in the, in the region close by the hypersurface, and you take the, the largest possible ball which is inside the hypersurface. Rho, rho plus is the radius of, the, uh, of a ball uh, which encloses, which uh, stays outside and the, the, the smallest possible radius. Um, okay, then... Um, so let me explain the, the strategy of what we are doing. Um, we, as uh, Huiskan was uh, mentioning yesterday, uh, we want to show that um, the flow, the only singularity that it can have is of type one. Uh, so the, we know that T is the singular, let's, uh, let us call singular time the T. T is uh, surely finite because uh, uh, we have uh, said it the, the other time, anything compact uh, is, um, by comparison with a contracting sphere, has to become singular in finite time. So the, uh, and we also know that, um, that uh, A square, so that the, the maximum of a square tends to infinity as uh, t goes to t. Um, but we don't know, so I've already told you everything is shrinking to a point, but a priori we don't know. So we wonder maybe the, the surface develops a corner at some time, uh, or maybe the, the curvature can um, uh, can become inf infinite, but the, 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 maybe the, the whole surface collapses to something uh, flat, uh, but which is not a point. Well, uh, this estimate we have just proved uh, rules out this, uh, because uh, in this case you have rho minus going to zero and rho plus going to something positive, so that, that ratio would, uh, uh, would not satisfy that estimate. But we have to exclude this. And to exclude this, there is a trick uh, which was introduced by uh, Kai Sing Cho uh, for the study of the Gauss curvature flow, but applies to, um, with uh, great generality to, uh, to geometric flows, uh, to hypersurface flows, which um, uh, involves the support function. Uh, so you fix some uh, T0, uh, less than capital T, and uh, you know that uh, since uh, you, are, you have not reached a singular time, then uh, you have something smooth, so rho minus is greater than zero. Then by convexity, uh, uh, well, let, let let define um, x0, the um, y0, the center of the ball 
of radius uh, rho minus T0, which is contained in our hypersurface. And then by convexity, we know that um, uh, F uh, P T zero um, minus Y zero scalar the normal. is uh, greater than or equal to rho minus of T0. Uh, what does this mean? So take any point uh, and take the scalar product uh, of uh, this vector and this vector, the, the, the normal. This means that it is um, basically the, the, the distance of the tangent plane uh, to this point uh, to this uh, center. But uh, since the convex set and uh, for theory the, the sphere all lie on the same side of the tangent plane, then you have this inequality. Then um, the idea of, um, of this trick is to consider this function equal to the quotient of the, of the mean curvature, so the, the speed of our flow, divided by mm, this object here that minus uh, one half of this value. And um, uh, one observation is, uh, since our flow is con contracting, if the sphere is included uh, in our hypersurface, is enclosed uh, at time t0, then this is also true at previous time. So also for t less than t0, we have the same property. So this um, denominator is never zero for t less than t zero. And uh, actually the, the denominator is uh, comparable with uh, rho minus. And um, well, I, I have, I'm running out of time. Um, uh, but maybe I just uh, just sketch you the um, the how it how it uh, goes on. Then maybe I will give you more details at the same time. But one can use the maximum principle to obtain a bound uh, on uh, uh, upper bound on W. So if you compute the evolution of uh, evolution equation of W, you see that it has a, a nice reaction term, which becomes negative uh, for large values of W. So this means that uh, W cannot become too large. Um, so the, since the, 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 our estimate, so th this somehow cannot be much larger than rho plus, so this uh, this uh, expression. This cannot be, uh, this is comparable to the diameter which is comparable to rho plus. So the denominator is um, between uh, somehow rho minus and rho plus which are comparable to each other. So um, W is uh, more or less like uh, H over rho minus. Uh, so this uh, shows that um, H is bounded above if rho minus is bounded below.
which means that as long uh, as uh, rho minus uh, has not gone to zero, the curvature is bounded. But on a convex uh, manifold, uh, hypersurface, this is the sum of uh, the principal curvatures. So if the sum of uh, n positive numbers is bounded above, then each of these numbers is bounded above. So this means that we, you have no singularity if rho minus does not tend to zero. So the, the conclusion is that rho minus tends to zero as uh, t goes to the singular time. But since the ratio of rho minus and rho plus is also uh, going to, uh, is bounded, then also rho plus has to tend to zero. So this proves that you are shrinking to a point. But, uh, well, I don't have, um, uh, so I'm, my time is uh, basically over, but uh, using the comparison with the sphere, you know that um, rho minus and rho plus uh, cannot be both uh, bigger or both uh, smaller. Than, so you, you know that um, the hypersurface is uh, shrinking to a point. Then you can compare with a round solution that shrinks to a point at the same time. You have your manifold, your hypersurface, and uh, the sphere. You choose the radius of the sphere so that they shrink at the same point at the same time. Then you know that the sphere cannot be uh, completely inside or completely outside because otherwise this would contradict that they shrink uh, at the same time. So since they, the two have to intersect for all times, this means that the radius of the sphere must to be between these two. This means that the um, rho minus and rho plus have the same rate as in a shrinking sphere. And then the um, estimate on W we had before also yields that uh, H, uh, so the curvature blow up at the same rate uh, as the sphere. So you, the implies that you have type one. No? Since you have type one of uh, something with a positive mean curvature, you know from uh, what uh, uh, Wiskan told yesterday that uh, the um, possible limits, uh, if you rescale, you, you find a smooth limit by rescaling, which is uh, either a sphere or a cylinder or a product of uh, average longer curve times uh, something flat. But uh, you know that you have a curvature pinching. You know that uh, lambda 1 and lambda n have a fixed uh, ratio. So you cannot have that in the limit you have uh, one flat direction because that would violate pinching. So the only possible limit is the only one of these uh, objects which uh, uh, has no flat direction, so that the sphere. So the, since you have pinching, you have that uh, rescaled uh, MT converged to a sphere. So this is a sketch. I'm sorry I didn't give the details of this step, which is an important part of this argument, but. Um, I, I hope I have given you the, the, the main ideas of this approach to, to this result. So I thank you for your attention. <laughs>